Welcome back to the boathouse. Last week, Steve and Grandpa found that the big maple that helped support the boathouse roof had split badly. And with several thunderstorms coming their way, it was a priority to get the top of that tree on the ground. And with Carolyn's return delayed, Steve keeps himself busy by getting started on the bulkheads. Nothing quite as fun as putting on a full harness in the morning. <laughs> so Grandpa and I worked on the tree the other day a little bit and got the rope rigged. Ah, I cut too far. Undercut a little too deep. Got the chain stuck, which is actually, believe it or not, the first time I've gotten the chainsaw stuck up in a tree. I've done really well till now. <laughs> but got that stuck, and then we heard some, some good thunder boomers coming in, and we decided to call it quits before I got electrocuted. Cutting trees is dangerous enough. Cutting trees during a lightning storm? No thank you. Um, so, we are back at it today. Let's see if we can finish this up, because we got some more thunderstorms coming in this week, and be a real bummer if that tree took the boathouse out. Okay. Cool. So, Robin, I am going to put this in here. I'm going to use the truck as an anchor. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see, but there's a black rope that's hanging on the branch out there that's cut off. Okay. And part of that black rope goes down to a sling about halfway around the tree where yep. there's a shackle. Yep. And when I want to lower something because it's going to land on the boathouse, mm -hmm. I'm going to pull up the end of that rope. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it through a crotch somewhere up in the tree. Okay. I'm going to tie it to the branch that I want to have caught. Okay. And then I'm going to have you hold that line. Okay. And you're basically going to belay it. I'll cut the branch. Once the branch falls, you can lower the branch to the ground. Okay. So there's the Y that it goes through, that'll cause friction. Mm -hmm. The shackle that's slung around the tree, that'll keep the line in towards the tree so it's not coming out and getting hung up in it. Mm -hmm. That'll be your second point of friction. If I'm dropping a smaller branch, those two points of friction will be enough for you to control it. Mm -hmm. If I give you a three, it means I want three points of friction because okay. I'm sending down a big one. Okay. And I want you to run that line over here okay. and just throw it through here. And then stand back like this so that the line goes from you mm -hmm. through the truck to the tree through the crotch mm -hmm. to the branch I gotcha. and that way you can increase the friction if i drop something really big mm -hmm. i'll tell you a four okay and i want you to come through here mm -hmm. and then do one wrap around gotcha. it <clears throat> and then we'll have four points of friction okay i'm gonna go grab the chainsaw and head up there okay. i can't hear you when i'm up there okay so if I'm not running the saw and you yell, I'll probably be able to hear you and communicate. Mm -hmm. If I'm running the saw, you're going to have to scream like as loud as you possibly can for me to hear you over the saw and over the hearing protection. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say, this is probably the most dangerous thing that I do. I've done a lot of dangerous things, but cutting trees down while you're in the tree, that's top of the list. But it's going pretty well. Don't jinx myself. Uh, everything that's hanging over the boathouse on this side is roped off, so now I'm just going to send all this stuff, which should be pretty fun. It's getting real muggy. Glasses keep fogging up. Okay, you ready?
And that's what we're looking for. So we have to undercut there, come back a little bit, one way or the other, it doesn't matter too much, and do your overcut. And then you see this piece of wood here just shears. And what that does is this one I cut a hinge and I wanted it to lean away from me because it was standing pretty vertically. But this one's going out more horizontal. And what you don't want to happen is for the ends of the branches to go down because then it hits the ground and it's like a springboard and it goes all wherever it wants to go. So if you can do the undercut, do the overcut, get it to snap like that, they have a tendency to just fall flat. Uh, and that is really what you're looking for. Okay, now I gotta move, actually, let's hit this one. And we'll move down a few notches. Teamwork makes the dream work. It is amazing how sweaty and dirty I got in like less than two hours of tree cutting. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, I seem to be at a little bit of an impasse. Not really an impasse, but I'd love to put another coat of paint, but this is actually still tacky 24 hours later. It is, uh, I woke up this morning and the weather said 99% humidity. It is sticky out. So this is taking literally forever to dry, uh, which is fine. It's not a huge deal. You can move on to other things. I wanted to get this painted and then get the bilge pitched, but to pitch the bilge, we need to do a temporary caulking job on those lower planks and we need to melt and pour the pitch. And that's something that I have never done. I've never caulked and I've never pitched. And you know who does and has is Carolyn and she is not here yet. So she's supposed to be here in three days. Um, so instead of just kind of spinning the wheels for the three days and waiting for her to get here to do the pitch, I'm going to start to move on to bulkheads. And then they'll be a little annoying uh, when we go to pitch the bilge, but I don't think it'll be terrible. So the first bulkhead I want to put in is the one that's going to go right here and it will separate the main part of the boat from the four peak. So up here will be the only double bed in the boat where you could sleep two people and the only kind of private space on the boat. I mean, it's a small space. There's not really any privacy, but if you wanted to go somewhere and shut the door and not look at anybody else, the four peak would be the place to do it. Now it's not going to be a very comfortable place when you're out cruising and crossing oceans. Um, but at anchor and harbor, it'll be a really nice refuge up there. So I've got one of the big panels. I dragged it out into the shop yesterday and we got to get it fit in here, which means we need to make a template. 
So I've got my trusty 0.9 mechanical pencil that we use all the time, a black Sharpie, a red Sharpie. We've got three different lengths of joggle sticks. And we've got a whole bunch of thin, flimsy cedar. So I'm going to get the cedar tucked in here, and then we'll use the joggle sticks to pick up the pattern. And then I'll be able to take the pattern apart and reassemble it out on the piece of homemade plywood. We should be able to get pretty close with the first shot, because wrestling that whole panel in here would be a nightmare. It's really heavy. There we have the rough shape of the bulkhead. It's going to be a door that gets cut out over here. And the panel isn't quite long enough to go to the other side. Uh, and they did that partially on purpose. One, because it would make a huge table that we would have had to make to do the glue up. Uh, and two, because there's going to be an entrance way to the four peak here, there's no sense in making that bulkhead all continuous. We'll be able to fit a piece uh, onto the starboard side and it won't be any issue. I have this clamped into place. Uh, and one thing that a lot of people do at this point is to take a hot glue gun and go through and glue all these together and add a couple more strips uh, to you know, connect these up here. And then what that does is it allows you to take the whole pattern out as one big thing and go lay it out. And then the hot glue joints aren't terrible to kind of break apart and scrape off and reuse the pieces. I am flying solo right now, and this is a pretty big panel for me to try to pick up and carry downstairs and lay out by myself. So what I'm gonna do is mark all of these junctions really, really well. And I'm gonna do it with the red Sharpie so there's no confusing with the marks with anything else. And mark what goes towards port and starboard. Uh, and then when I take these apart, I'll take them all apart, carry them downstairs and set them up uh, as a jigsaw puzzle. So I'm gonna go through and mark all those connections first. And then we can go through with the joggle sticks and start tracing everything else out. I've got all of these marked where they meet, and I've got all of the places where the cedar meets up with something marked. So underneath the deck, where the boards are touching on the planking. Next step is just go around and make as many marks with the joggle sticks as we can so that we can go and pick up the pattern. The more points, the easier they are to connect, as long as you can keep them all straight. And I've got three joggle sticks here, so short, medium, and long, also known as A, B, and C. So I will trace out the joggle stick and mark the ones, twos, threes, fours, so we know where on the stick we are, and I'll mark which stick it is. Okay. Whew. All right, that should be everything for this side. So I've got the bottom corner of the bilge band stringers here couple for the face because that's just a smooth arc so I don't need a ton of references. Then I have a whole bunch as we go around the corner here from the face to the corner to the inside corner to where we hit the planking. A couple runs up the planking. We're going to float the planking so we don't have to be super particular there. We just want to be close. And then a whole pile of measurements up here where we go around the shelf and then down to the clamp and we want to make sure that that all fits really nice and snugly. So the next step is to head down towards the build and work up the other side. It's a, it's a slow process, but if you go slow and do it carefully and accurately, you'll get really close on the first shot, which saves you a lot of time later. I've got everything marked that I want to mark. And I did everything with joggle stick B. So that makes it real easy. We just got to bring B up. Uh, and now I can go through and unclamp all of this, bring it downstairs and see if we can reassemble it. This is some serious futzing. <laughs> Trying to make sure that 
the lines run vertical, I really should have hung a plumb bob and marked the line in the center here. But I think what I can do is just eyeball it off of the deck here. So that's the other side of the deck. Let's just chill here for a minute. Think about the next moves. This just could sand it off. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll get it fit and then uh, sand it smooth. And then by the time it gets bolted to the boat and the slats for bunks and everything get yep, attached yep. to it, it'll straighten the little okay. bows out of it. Well, you just lay this down and kind of tabletop it on the boat now. Grandpa and I got pretty close to getting the bulkhead fit yesterday. We've got a little more trimming to do. So right now we're buttoned up against the build stringers. I gotta relieve that a little bit. And the very bottom here is bumped up against the aft end of the mast step. So for this panel to sit vertically, the bottom of it's gotta go forward a little bit. Uh, so I gotta trim off a little bit of the mast step there to get that to set in. We'll do a little more trimming here. Uh, but before we pull it out and do those kind of last little tweaks, I want to see if we can figure out where the door is going to be. So there'll be a door here that will be the entrance to the four peak. And I'd like to use one of the mahogany doors from Victoria. So let's go into the garage and go see what we have for an inventory for mahogany frame and panel doors. It's kind of awesome to have an inventory of mahogany frame and panel doors. Feet by three to four feet. So we get two feet wide, three, four feet tall, depending on where we land. So let's go see what we got for doors. Can always bring a few in and see how they fit. Okay, let's see what we got. Four feet. Okay, this might work. So this panel, if I remember correctly, was behind the companionway and in front of, just forward of the diesel engine uh, in Victoria. 
And I'm wondering if having it hinged might be nice that we could fold the four peak door and have it open and the passage to the four peak, but not have a big doorway in the way. So this, although maybe a bit big, I think that's a possibility. So let's, let's consider that one. I'm pretty short and skinny, but it's a little too short and skinny. All right. Those are the same. Okay. This was Victoria's uh, door to the head, and I think we will keep it as the door to the head. So. that off to the side. That could work to do some cleanup. And I don't think this was originally a door. I think this was one of the panels in the four peak, but I don't see why it couldn't become a door. Okay, that's two good options. And we've got, yeah, these are from the Four Peak. Some jabroni at some point. They put a 60 gallon diesel tank in the four peak and they just cut a hole in the beautiful frame and paneling. Like, why? There had to have been another way to set that up. <laughs> um, cool. Well, those are our options. So let's grab those. Let's go see how these fit. I think this might work. Um, can even go that way maybe a little bit and make sure we clear the frame here, but just have to do it by a little bit. And then I gotta do a little more figuring over here because there's gonna be a bunk or a berth along here and the saloon table. And I gotta make sure that all of that'll nestle in here okay uh, with this width of door. Uh, otherwise, I'll have to move it outboard a little bit towards starboard, uh, in which case we're going to lose the corner here. And we could, we could nip off the very corner. It would be kind of a shame to do. Uh, and I can try the other door, but I really like how this will give a nice big entrance to the four peak. And then we'll be able to open the door and they'll only come out to about here when they're folded together. So you'll be able to leave that open and not have this, this big door that swings out, uh, which could be good. The other thing is to maybe put the other one on there and have it swing that way, I don't know. Let me grab it and take a look. Well, this is gonna be the, the jigsaw part of figuring all this out is with all the things from Victoria uh, and how that wants to work with Arabella and the layout that we wanna do. So there's gonna be a whole lot of thinking and cogitating as Casey would say. <laughs> Next week, we'll take a closer look at the overall layout of the interior, and Steve reveals his own modifications to Atkin's plan and goes over it with his friend Satchel, who really just came over to go mountain biking. And then, as promised, Carolyn returns to the boathouse. Some of my stuff. Before the two of them can pitch the bilge, Carolyn will temporarily caulk the lower planks with oakum. She'll give Steve and all of us a crash course on how it's done.